Warning! The story in this video is entirely made up. You should never attempt to eat anything that was made in laboratory. My grandma had a headache. And since most of the chemists are immortal, we don't usually keep things like pharmaceuticals in our house. On top of that, this happened on the New Year's Day and no pharmacy in my town worked during this time. At this point, I realized that instead of making TNT this year, I would have to synthesize a pain reliever. There are awful lot of chemicals that have been used for that purpose, but in this case I needed the compound I could make the fastest. That meant no complicated multiple step synthesis, which take months to complete. Instead of that, I chose one that I could do in a single reaction, that proceeds fast and doesn't require much purification. The best candidate for the job was the good old aspirin, which I could make by just acetylating some salicylic acid. So these are the two main ingredients I'm gonna be using for this reaction. In the right, we have the salicylic acid and in the left is the acetic anhydride. Before starting the synthesis, I should say that the anhydride was technical grade and although I distilled it and its boiling point was constant, it still had a strange smell reminding that of onions. This didn't prevent the reaction to work but caused some difficulties as you will see later. I added 4 grams of the salicylic acid to a 100 ml round bottom flask. This was followed by 12 ml of acetic anhydride which I used to wash the beaker and the funnel from any remaining acid. Then I added a stir bar and under vigorous stirring I added 5 drop of concentrated sulfuric acid. The flask was equipped with a reflux condenser and heated to 70 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. While the temperature was rising, the salicylic acid gradually dissolved in the acetic anhydride. What's happening here in terms of reaction is that the acetic anhydride acetylates the phenolic group of the salicylic acid. The sulfuric acid acts as a catalysis making the anhydride more reactive and the reaction go quicker. Note that the anhydride I'm using is much more than the calculated stoichiometric amount. That's because in this case it's a reagent and solvent at the same time. Over the course of the reaction the mixture turned yellow and then kind of pinkish. I don't know why this happened but it was probably something to do with my acetic anhydride quality. After the reaction time was over I removed the flask from the oil bath and poured in in about 200 ml of distilled water. This was the part when things went off recipe. The paper I was following stated that upon addition the aspirin should precipitate out. In my case this didn't happen and instead it separated as an oil. However, this was definitely not the end of the world and it would be a nice demonstration that in chemistry things don't always go as planned. When you have such a case, you have to improvise using your knowledge and previous experience. Aspirin is very soluble in boiling water, but not as much in cold water. So by heating the oil, I can dissolve it in the water and then upon cooling the solution, it would have better chances of precipitating out. So I heated the mixture until everything dissolved and then placed it in some cold water. Immediately, it started to get cloudy and soon a precipitate started to form. I finished the cooling with an ice pad to maximize my yield. Now as you can see, I had a beaker full of aspirin waiting to be filtered. I dumped it all on my Buchner funnel and washed the beaker with some distilled water. Here is my crude product. It was not very pure so I had to recrystallize it. There are many solvents that could be used but I chose distilled water because, well, it's the cheapest one. I added 100 ml of distilled water and heated the mixture until it started to boil. Unfortunately, even then the solution was still cloudy. To fix that, I filtered it through some filter paper while still hot. This operation is called hot filtration 
and is very frequently used when purifying stuff. The fugit was now crystal clear and was left aside to crystallize. After a few hours, a really nice needle-like crystals had formed. They were vacuum filtered using my pump and transferred on a crystallizing dish. To dry them more quickly, I put the dish on my hot plate and turned it on on the lowest setting. After an hour I was left with some perfectly dry powdered aspirin. My yield was 3.9 grams which corresponds to a percent yield of 74.8. Since this was for my grandma, I had to confirm that the quality of my product was good. To do this I decided to measure its melting point. This is a capillary tube with one sealed and one open end. With the help of my spatula, I managed to put some of the aspirin in the capillary. The next step was to seal the open end on my burner. Then I fixed the capillary to my thermocouple with some tape. The strange piece of glassware you are seeing here is called tile tube. It is filled with mineral oil which will help us to get a steady temperature. When the side arm is heated, the oil there gets less dense and goes to the top part. It is replaced with some cold oil from the bottom part, which is heated and again goes up. This way, the oil circulates constantly transferring the heat from the burner. The temperature at the top part rises steadily and is measured by the thermocouple. During the heating, the oil also expands as you can tell by the fact its level is rising. When the melting point is reached, the solid in the capillary melts and becomes transparent. If the compound is pure, this will happen in a very tight temperature interval, which is characteristic of every compound. In my case, the solid melted between 133 and 135 degrees Celsius, which corresponds well to the literature melting point of aspirin, which is 135 Celsius. After all, my thermocouple has a 1 degree error interval. So that was all for the synthesis of this important pharmaceutical. Fortunately, by the time I was done, my grandma's headache had already been gone, so she didn't take the aspirin. At least now that I have it, I don't have to go to the pharmacy whenever I have a headache. If you like this video, give it a thumb up. Also, if you still haven't subscribed to my channel, now it's the best time to do so because I have some really nice videos coming soon. And if you really want to support my work and help me make better videos, you could share this video with more people that are interested in chemistry.